Xeno 335, not just any Ooh. old Xeno, but the Collision 2024 Wednesday pre-local and already getting things off with a banger. Obviously, you know, we've seen some crazy sets on the quad all night long. Yet another one here with Mr. E and Melly. No matter how many things change at Xeno, no matter how many invaders we have, guess what, Swiss? Some things, some things stay the same. They do, they do. I mean, Melly has been turning up. He's looking forward to, forward to actually winning this bracket again. He said, like, this is my night. So I'm like, okay, well, look, it's either Xeno or it's going to be Collision. You can only have one. And he thought about it for a quick sec. He's like, I'm going to do both. Listen, if you if you can only, you know what? Why not try for both? But in the meantime, take that rent money, right? While it's sitting right in front of you as Melly now just trying to create some space, utilizing the, the whip from Victor Belmont here, just right, spacing you out, keeping the pressure on, and really abusing the fact that as long as you can keep Lucina out, she's not that scary. Mystery has always had trouble with Melly. He's been pretty bopped consistently by him here at Xeno, but it's something that he's been labbing, been working on. I've seen him grinding out those sessions on his uh, Metafy on his Twitch. Though I'll be honest, his viewers are uh, not as good as Melly over here. Uh, I will say as well, right, Mr. E, as a play style, as a player, right, he tends to play more measured, more patient, especially, right, as of recent. When he was younger, not so much, but... When he was younger, he was Smash 4. Exactly. Hey, a different game, different characters, different restrictions. Hi, but dear. here, right, this measured play style really plays into a lot of what Melly wants you to do, right, is when you're taking that moment to think, right, while you're attacking, that's when Mel Melly catches you slipping, and he wants to force you to play in that panic play style. When you play this measured game like we're seeing Mr. E play, hey, right, you're forced into, okay, I'm gonna top, empty hop grab you, and then I gotta throw in no follower. It's been a struggle because he finally has learned, like, okay, I'm gonna use the armor, the, the throw invincibility so I can protect myself from that cross. Maybe the axe when it comes down as well, but that cross has been giving him the most trouble, but doesn't seem like it today. Finally bringing this back with the second stock, evening it up. This huge opportunity now, oh, Swiss. He might it. just be dead. No, no. the Ted's are gonna find the way back to stage. And I love that down air to use the slide momentum, right? Recognizing that that isn't one of the rare instances you can cross up your opponent here in Ultimate. So going to find another opportunity, Melly back to stage after almost losing his stock at a disastrous percent. Well, Mr. E now has to find his way back. It's always a struggle. He's got everything thrown out. You have the kitchen sink and the whip. It's like four things at once. Think fast. Wow, beautiful spacing by Mr. E, right? That landing animation getting him just underneath the chain whip when it matters most, but still just right, the posturing game going on. Melly with the stage control, so it's up to Mr. E now to find a way out of this corner and back in the center, going to get the dislodgement with just a dash attack, follow up with one and another. Again, here it is, that play style just now paying dividends for him. Sometimes I think Mr. E plays a little too slow in this matchup. Just because if Mr. E has plenty of time to think, so does Melly. And Melly has a lot more things he can throw out. So far, Melee doing a good job of just keeping Mr. E near that platform. But finally getting another grab. It's been a special, but they haven't led to anything substantial. No, and that's really right, one of the things that Belmont can do is force you to grab him as the easiest form of counterplay, but then he set up this pressure. That. I know, dude, it was insane just not able to find the mark, but now, right, these players giving each other so many extra opportunities, and that throw, well, it'll kill you eventually, but not quite yet. Oh my gosh, he countered the water, didn't do anything. Who knew that you could counter water? Hey man, I mean, I when thought you needed oil for that. Listen, you can counter anything if you put enough holiness in it, but right now the only thing you're gonna counter is your second stock. Mr. E getting carved up by that axe, and now down to one here on town and city, my friend. Melly always plays most confidently when he's ahead. He hates playing from behind, so right now you're gonna see him go for some crazy plays, but now he just kinda has to hold the lead. No, not, I was gonna say, not only hold the lead, but hold on to that confidence that, as you mentioned, right, so much easier to have when you have that lead, when you have that kind of room, right, to work with. But Mr. E now taking away not just the percent and stock lead, but also the amount of space you have left to work on, right? That's, that gap is closing down, and now it's up to Melly, right, to reverse the situation, close that gap himself, just to create any amount of space and stay in this one. Well, Mr. E's been doing such a great job of just keeping their distance, knowing when not to jump in, because Melly loves to kind of counteract that. You'll see him kind of jump up, angle that upwards with the whip, and try to catch a preemptive jump, but Mr. E playing very grounded. Me yeah, Mel Melly keeps, you see here, with this jump, trying to con mix his chain angles, both condition Mr. E into getting any sort of preemptive jump or swing that will allow Melly to find the whip on it, force him off stage, and close out this game. But Mr. E just standing there waiting. When you don't press a button in ultimate, right, you have access to everything. Hey, 
And, and Mr. E has used that to his advantage, sitting here, jumping, keeping those options open just like that to bait out these preemptive swings that Bel the Belmonts have to make and finding the opportunity to find any little bit of advantage here in this war of attrition. So if you notice that, that the Holy Water actually caught both Mr. E and Melly. Because once Mr. E was in control of that, it's the reason why he missed that up smash the second stock. Because it's like, okay, I don't want to get a hit by it. Let me see if this up smash works when he really should have forward smashed. Oh no, Swiss! No. That axe, he slid all along the wall. Normally you want to, but here it just, it doesn't matter where you go. The axe is hanging close enough to the ledge to find the coverage regardless, but not going to close out yet. So Mr. E, now one last chance for both these players. Only a percent separates them, and just about anything's going to kill, but not the Nair 1. Going to miss the follow-up, and Melly somehow surviving again. Swiss, these two are unkillable. Thanks, Tom and City. Those high ceilings coming in clutch, just like that uh, slide. Ooh, what do we see? All right, jumping, jumping for dear life. Great recognition there from Melly too to recognize that Axe would go through the platform and Swiss. Now they might be at kill percent, right? We might not expect to see this game go another minute, but with these two, I was gonna say anything's possible, but Melly says, hold on guys, we cannot get under 60 seconds on this one. We're there. Well, that sounds like my timer is going off to find game one. So after all was said and done, so as you mentioned, Mr. E struggles a lot here with Melly, and he did. Well, look so at him. He you, didn't in you game one. You always see Mr. E so like you know confident, you know straight up, mm -hmm. like like at attention. He slumped. He's over. He's like, man, why did I come today? Why can't they be more like Fawn and just dodge tough brackets? Hey, hey, Fawn doesn't do just dodge tough brackets though. She also she carves them to. absolutely in half. When she decides to enter, that is not here this week. But Mr. E. Melly headed back to town and city for game number two in Swiss. What do you think, as a Lucina player, of Mr. E going back to the stage as a counterpart? This is tough. Honestly, Mr. E loves the stage. Gives him plenty of room to maneuver. You know, you have a long, you have the long ground. You have plenty of platforms to kind of shark your opponents. But it also gives Melly plenty of room as well to set up camp, go underneath the platforms as well. And so, really, it's just more of a who's going to use the advantages of the stage better than the other. And I think that what we just saw, right, is one of the big reasons Mr. E is going here. You're looking at these edge guards, right? These short town blast zones allow you so many extra opportunities to find those stocks earlier here against the Belmont. And the high top blast zone as well negates his vertical combos that we so regularly see Melly, right, put people on Twitter.com with. Now Mr. E going to have the advantage to stay attempt, but not able to convert, able to keep the pressure on, but Melly able to at least get you off of him, get back and reset stage from now. And just like that, Millie has just been holding on the ground. Millie, I mean, Mr. E on the back foot. And that's another bad thing about Town City. It's just those high, high ceilings. Mr. E going for some good juggles there, but it also saves Mr. E the trouble if he gets caught by that axe. Yeah, or that down, or that down air up special as well. Mr. E gonna lock down the edge guard though. No fancy tricks needed from him. And now gonna bounce off. Look for the Z catch there on the holy water, but not able to find it, Mr. E gave Melly a huge opportunity, now looking to capitalize here, but Mr. E somehow able to find his way out of that corner uncontested. Wow, both of them just whipping those grounds, but finally Mr. E's getting something started, some stray hits. It might just be enough. I like this pressure a lot from Melly, just the way he's playing at range, when he's picking to go in, give up the sweet spot in order to just take some extra stage control. It's really, really aware play, and you can tell just how many sets these two have, right? Where we interact it's not a, we set it's not a full neutral. moon. Oh no, Swiss, you got me. It's always a full moon if you believe hard enough, though. Ow! Yeah, you're not catching me barking on screen, sorry. <laughs> that means something entirely different when I do it. Oh. Anyways, anyways, <laughs> we are gonna keep on in this one. At Mr. E now trying to find a way, once again making his way, or sorry, Melly finding his way back to center stage, but not for long. Mr. E once again seizing that stage control back as soon as it went away. And whereas game one, it's both players struggle to keep any sort of lead. Mr. E is asserting a very solid one here. Potentially a huge one if he can just find this next stop. He just can't. You know, a lot of people say, just throw Richter off stage. He's like Little Mac with a bunch of items. Have you seen how Melee has been recovering? This is nothing like a Little Mac. Yeah, I think part of it too is just like, you have to pick your spots so well against Richter off stage. Because yes, he has his exploitable recovery, but he also has a tether. So you have to find your time perfectly to weep past these hitboxes. Oh. Potentially huge opportunity, but the drag down those four hitboxes, you're able That's to SDI fall out of it. And Mr. E able to use that get back down find the juggle situation, get the reversal and the stop. So beautiful heads up play from him. I mean, it was beautiful for Melly to give him the Shoryuken there. Like, hey, good stuff if you want to throw away a stock like that. 
I didn't think it was it was a bad idea of itself. You just didn't expect him to fall out of that drag down neutral air. But, but not recognizing that those hitboxes, you know, just aren't as good as you want them to be on the Belmonts. Listen, this is not Mortal Kombat. You just can't dial in a combo. Gotta read what hits. That doesn't stop players from dreaming, though, Swiss. Doesn't stop players I from dreaming. I don't dream of Mortal Kombat. Mott never might, but not I. <laughs> You're right, but we gotta hold one up for Xeno's strongest soldier, unable to be here tonight because of a project. So we're, you, Swiss and I, holding it on down as Melly, Mr. E, once again, right? Trying to find it. Ellie had the perfect o opportunity off that cross to find a stop, but once again, just not able to do it. And Mr. E continuing the pressure here at ledge, not able to capitalize that time, but still continuing well on his way. If, especially if we can find a little extra credit eh, to c taking this game too. How many axes does it take to kill Lucina? Well, just two. You know what? I was gonna say well, the world may never know, but we immediately found out, Swiss. Look, some mysteries will never remain a mystery. And you know what? You know what will never remain a mystery though? Mr. E. As he potentially maybe has solved his greatest mystery here in Melly, showing a dominant case. But as soon as we say that, so we gotta be careful not to put some hijinks on this one because Melly is starting to claw this lead back from the depths. Man, Mr. E just can't get in. Look at this. Oh, 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 what? Even uh, with the high ceilings. Hi, uh, sir, I. Hi, this is your Uber driver calling. Uh, I'd like to let you know that uh, I think I, th I think the restaurant forgot your DI with your order today. Oh no! Be because we, we got your F tilt, but but we forgot the DI. If Sorry I don't have a DI, that. I'm gonna send it back. But are we running back? No, we're going to Hollow Bastion instead. Yeah, and I think this stage makes a lot of sense for Melly. That s you've got the wide space right of any FD width stage here. Here, and the blast zone, large blast zones to boot, but that center platform is the big key. Yes, Lucina gets a lot of juggles off of it, but she also loves falling aerials, which, right, this low center plat makes a lot worse because you can't just falling aerial with impunity. You'll land on the platform just like that. Once the Belmonts get set up, they can use cross, use chain whip, control that whole center lane under and above platform, and you get to have a huge opportunity for those ladder combos Belmonts are known for. That was just harassment there on the mono pop, but Mystery finally taking Melly to the ledge. And now I love that tech in to mix it up, but just a little too far away to find those whips, so now you're gonna get set up, but with a roof over your head, hey man, that's the most secure housing the Belmonts have had in generations. And you know what? They are gonna keep it going here as Melly continues this pressure, and even though Mr. E finds a way out, it's not unscathed and still not able to dislodge this Monster Slayer from underneath their perch. Well, the only thing that Mystery just really messed up there was not grabbing the holy water once it bounced off shields. He's been getting a lot better at that. But, you know, crucial mistakes like that will prevent you from taking stocks in this matchup. I love these placements of this holy fire from Melly, where they're not even intended to hit, but just intended to make Mr. E go to ledge, take a suboptimal recovery route, so that Melly can clean up on the next interaction jump. just like that, right? Force him to ledge. Forced him to get antsy in the corner. Mr. E jumps. You see him jump a little too much compared to other players, right? He definitely has a little bit of a jump habit that players catch on to, and very few characters are better at exploiting a jump habit than the Belmonts. You know what? I'm going to blame Mr. E for my jump habit. I saw him. Like, I'm going to learn from the best, and the best has a jump habit. Listen, man, the best he may be here in North America on this character, but is it enough for him to win this set? Melly up a stock and counting right now, whacking on the damage, and again, Right, it's that center plot. Mr. E has not been able to find a consistent way in when Melly holds this edge of platform like that, right? He's forced to jump over the Holy Fire and the cross, and then Ms. Melly just cleans it up with that chain whip. I think Mr. E is just going to make a mental note for next time. Be like, okay, do not take a Belmont to center to a center platform. What a wonky little interaction. It looked like he was close enough, but because of the hurtbox shift, got popped in the sour spot and then swung back on over. So F Melly getting a little lucky there to hold on to that first stock. But hey, you take what you can get in a set like this one. Winner semis at Xeno. We are coming down now to a potential last stock for Mr. E as the axe once again finds its mark. So I swear Melly's got a homing tracker on those things. I mean, Melly's just playing incredibly. And Mr. E is losing steam here. You can just see it in his eyes. He's just like, okay, I have him down two whole stocks. Haven't been able to close anything out. Both of them just swing for the fences. Hey, man, sometimes you swing and you miss, but there's no strikeouts here because that was only one to the next person to whiff a swing, though it could spell disaster. Melia 173 at Mr. E with his winner side stock on the line, but getting on board, so he's closing that gap just a little bit. There's still a lot of work to be done, though, Swiss Rider. Yep, Mr. E taking a really big sign, being like, okay, 
next Donk. We'll just have to do it again. Hopefully not at uh, 165. I like that jump. I like the spacing there and the mix-up from Melly, right? He, he's shown that he's going to catch this cross over and over so far. So now Mr. E is waiting for him to catch it to try and punch the end lag. Melly's just jumping right over and swinging with a, 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 right across to catch those empty hop landings. And you see the levels, right, building on each other as the game and the set go on. But Swiss, there's no more room for them to build here. The pressure is rising for Mr. E to find a way off this ledge, a way back. Great parry to do so, but again, an early air dodge. I mean, that was the only way he was going to get in because Mr. E was just anticipating either a running grab or maybe if he jumps. So, you know, jumping an air dodge, ah, he hasn't tried that before. No, he, he, he's also tried it a couple times, right, to catch the Holy Fire that comes out. Melly's been really disciplined about not throwing it and forcing these with Z catches. I like the Crouch Ledge Club opportunity to try and find an edge guard on that chain whip, but Melly's smartly mixing up the recovery Swiss and giving himself one more chance. Now Mr. E back against the wall here. I mean, at this point, okay, never mind, you can bring it back. I was like, do you, maybe, maybe we just go to the next round. Hopefully somebody knocks out Melly for him. Oh, no. Okay, It'll, well, Melly can knock himself out. And Swiss, we've seen time and time again, all it takes, right? We, we've been joking about it so far, but sometimes all it takes is that back throw. It's that one interaction, and oh, the cro no cross? he missed the cross. Wait, he missed it, this is so huge. he didn't have it back yet, Swiss, and this isn't the opportunity that Mr. E needed, but he's got to find a way past the axe, burn the air dodge, but somehow finds a way to ledge, only to rinse, repeat, do it all he's again. He's making it back. And he's, he's making it back. somehow, Swiss. Well, he made it back. Oh my god, he's still alive. How? Do you want to be alive at this point? Listen, sometimes you just might want to take it, and you need someone to hold your hand. Don't worry, baby, because we understand. He's going to pull for it, pulling out all the stops, but still barely surviving. The patient off stage ah. is not going to be enough. Swiss Rider Melly somehow by the thinnest of margins. Snatching victory, dare I say, from the jaws of defeat. He was in the lead the whole time, but Mr. E clawed it all the way back. But, I mean, Miss Melly just... Wow, man. I feel like he makes it look effortless. He really does. He really, really does. And like there are top players who's like, okay, you can see like the gears like turning their heads. Melly is a well-oiled clock. I was gonna say that you was go such back? a yeah. I would love to go back just because this is such a smart axe from Melly. He, he watch where this covers right. It pushes you off stage. Mm -hmm. The jump axe here right covers roughly that arc right. Right. So he he finds it. He follows it, and then. Okay, it, it desynced at the perfect time. At the perfect time for me there. So it it covers the arc. You'll see it come up here, and then this traps. It goes past ledge. Mm -hmm. So you right. This axe goes past ledge here. Right. So you can't. Oh, so you have to fall down if you're Mr. E and ride ledge back to stage because you go high in any way. You get covered by chain whip, right? Mm -hmm. I. If you don't, Mr. E got caught here not for jumping past ledge, not in the air, but for his landing lag. Oh, if wow. you watch what happens here, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that's minus 10 frames. So he comes forward, and then he wave lands. Oh, so he's in no. landing lag. Waveland and I, the only thing that is going to get you out of that situation is if you can time your jumping animation, get the no impact land.